Good afternoon. Hey, Lauren. Good afternoon to you. Hey, man, I hope you guys are. Hey, Angela. I hope you guys are safe and warm on this cold northeastern day. I think there's a storm that's, um, or rather, a cold arctic blast that's going all over the place. Graziella, God bless you. Amen. Janie, God bless you. Janie, is it warm down there? <laughs> if it's warm down there, I need... Janie, I need for you... I need you to pray. If it's warm down there, Janie, I need you to pray that God would allow me access to come down there. <laughs> because it is, it is cold up here. Right now, the car says... It's 29 degrees, but the wind is blowing, so it's a little bit colder than that. It's a little bit colder than that. It's roughly about 20 degrees, uh, between 19 and 20 degrees up here in the Northeast. Amen. And so I'm so grateful, grateful for this privilege to share with you guys today and, you know, aptly, uh, well, something that I can apply to today. Is, is this, um, you know, are you prepared? Are you prepared? You know, one of the things I find is that in every situation, you know, in our humanity, we really don't want to have to deal with certain things, right? We really don't want to have to deal with certain things. There's certain things that we would prefer to not deal with. I mean, can you imagine a life where we had no problems? A life where we had no issues, right? Guess what? If we had a life that was with no issues, then guess what? We would be the issue. Why do I say that? Look at Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve was given a perfect environment and they messed it up, right? So it's something about the word of God. David said, I was born into sin and shapened by iniquity, right? So in other words, the, the, there are areas of my life that are messy and because of that, you know, problems are going to come. But but here's the challenge. The ch challenge is not so much to avoid problems or to get away from problems, but the challenge is to be prepared, to be prepared, okay? One of the things I know and one of the things that I've been taught years ago, that knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. When you have knowledge of what to do in various circumstances, look at... um some of the mothers and fathers of old who did not have a lot of money, did not have a lot of, you know, wherewithal. And, and for the, to, to be honest with you, a lot of them didn't even have a lot of education. But guess what? They found a way to feed their families. And to take care of themselves. A lot of people have been in situations that have been overwhelming. And what do they do? They give up. They give up. But thank God, God teaches us to be prepared. He says, by your word are your servants warned. Hey, Jay, God bless you. Good afternoon. He says, by your word are your servants warned. So in other words, God gives us a heads up when things are not the way it should be. When things are uh, in a certain way that we need to be prepared for something. Sometimes the Lord will tell us, like he told Elijah. He told um, Elijah, he says, I want you to eat. He says, for the journey is long. The journey is long. You got a long journey, so you need to eat. Um, there, um, Paul told Timothy, he said, um, and mind you, this is a different kind of wine that we have today, but Paul told Timothy to take wine for your stomach, right? There are certain things that you have to do to prepare yourself. You know, when we look at our bodies and the health of our bodies, we got to keep ourselves in shape. We got to prepare ourselves for whatever situation we face. In my situation, when I was, uh, hey, Gloria, God bless you. When I was a young man, um, I was like 12 years old. Um, when I was 12 years old, I was hit by a car and uh, my left ankle was damaged. And um, when my left ankle was damaged, you know, the doctor told my mother that I would never walk again. They said, nope, he's not going to walk ever again. You know, he's, he's going to have to be fitted for a prosthesis. He's going to have to have, you know, a leg that, that is mechanical you know, because he's not going to be able to walk again. And so 
you know, but my mother was a praying woman. She was a praying woman. And so she prayed and told the doctors, you do your part and I'm gonna let God do, do his part. And praise the Lord, you know, I have like a t-shirt <laughs> that says, you know, the year that I was born and it says all original parts. <laughs> and, um, and so I'm grateful for the fact of that, you know, I have my own leg, I can, my own foot, I can walk. You know, I can jump, I can run, I'm athletic, I can do so many different things. However, when the weather starts to change, I could feel the weather way ahead of time. And what some people do in my situation, when they feel it, all they do is complain. When they feel that, oh, the weather's about to change, or it's going to rain, or it's the temperature, <clears throat> excuse me, or the temperature is going to drop, or something they start complaining oh god what am i to do right what i do is that i start preparing because i look at that wound that wound teaches me something that the weatherman can't teach me that wound teaches me that the weather is about to change when the weatherman says oh no today is going to be sunny and today is going to be bright right i can tell right away that it's going to rain i can tell that rain is going to pour down I could tell that the temperature is going to drop. And what does that do? That that allows me to leave my house prepared. To leave my house. Good afternoon, um, Evangelist Green and Kevin. God bless you. Um, it allows me to leave my house prepared. To dress appropriately. To to wear the layers that I need to wear. To, to put on, you know, Asper Cream or whatever I have to put on in order to you know, allow me to function throughout the day. You know, some of you, God has given intuition. Some of you, God has given discernment. And why does he give you these things? Not so that you might have a spider sense. No, but God gives it to you so that you might prepare yourself, so that you might prepare yourself for what you have to deal with. You know, if you, if you know that you are fasting today, then you need to prepare yourself. You know, don't just jump into the fast and do it. No, prepare yourself. If you know that, you know, let's say you, <clears throat> you know that jobs are, it's possible for you to lose your job. So when you have a job, prepare yourself so that if there ever comes a time of famine, you have something to carry you for a minute, right? Don't just live life for the moment. Don't just live life in the sense of, you know, where like, for example, you know, you enjoy the moment, but don't live life like as if this is the only thing that matters. No, you do need to prepare yourself. You need to prepare yourself for challenges. You need to prepare yourself for change. Even there's an old saying that says that the only thing that's constant is change. Change is the only thing that will always be different. It will always, you, you're always going to have a different day. There was a songwriter years ago that wrote this song that says, what a difference a day makes. You know, you could wake up in the day and it could be sun shining and, and it could be a beautiful day, right? Then you could wake up in the day and the sun can turn to a storm in a hot second right? There's a lot of people, like when I think about <clears throat> some of the major devastations here in, in New Jersey, Hurricane Sandy, when I think about in New Orleans, uh, Hurricane Katrina, when I think about, you know, hurricanes that hit Florida's coast, Hugo, and, and other places, when I think about these things, a lot of people were living their lives without being prepared. Living their lives with all the stuff, all the things that you have, thinking that the way things are today, it's going to be like that always. No, it's not. You got to prepare yourself. You got to prepare yourself in adventure. In perhaps, even the Word of God says, make friends with, with unrighteous mammon. Right? That's what the Bible says. It says, make friends with mammon. What is mammon? Mammon is money. It says, make friends with tell you to do that it says because it says if you ever get kicked out of your house <laughs> you'll have an everlasting habitation some people have lived their lives apart from people and the only time they call on somebody is when they need help hey baby girl Christina how you doing love you baby um, and uh, you know and God bless you God bless you 
you know? The Bible says to make friends with unrighteous men, right? You, when you got it going your way and you got things happening in your favor, you know, be friendly to people because guess what? Sooner or later, you might have a need. Sooner or, sooner or later, you might have a challenge. And, and those same people, the word of God says, in the same measure that you give, it shall be given back to you, pressed down together, shaken together and running over, shall men heap into your bosom. Right. One of the things that has been hallmark of my life, you know, because, you know, I'm constantly helping so many people. And what I find is that when I have a challenge in my life, there are people who help me. Like, I'll never forget, you know, when I went through very bad points in my life, you know, and, and I didn't have a car. You know, I lost my truck was was giving me more problems, you know than anything like every time I would turn around my truck would break down right you know and and mind you it gave me good service because man I was hauling bricks I was hauling uh gravel I was hauling so much stuff for miles and hauling so much weight and I had this truck for a while while I was building my business and um um thank you baby I love you and um and so you know and I and I did all of a sudden I realized financially I could not maintain fixing the truck, the insurance, the gas, and everything like that. And this bad boy was a, it was a gas guzzler, right? So what I ended up having to do, I, I made the conscious decision to sell the truck. I made the conscious decision to sell the truck. And thankfully, I kept the truck in such good shape, um, body-wise and everything like that, that someone bought the truck and pretty much gave me the same money that I paid for it like six years earlier. Right, which was a blessing, and um, and they gave me the money, and I had now extra money. But guess what? I didn't have a car, right? So guess what? There was three people. Do you hear me? Three people that came and saw. They would say to me, "Where's your truck?" I said, "Man, I had to sell it because that truck was breaking down every time I look around." And they said, "Well, how are you getting around?" I said, well, you know, I take the train and I take the bus and I ride my bike. I do all this like that. They said, no, 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 you can't do that. Here, look, we got an extra car in the backyard. Use that car until you get your own. Why? Because in the same measure <laughs> that you give, it shall be given back to you. <laughs> God will bless you. God will cover you. When you go through your rough places, God will cover you. And that's why you have to prepare for those times. You prepare for those times by being friendly. You prepare for those times by gaining knowledge and understanding. Like, for example, you know, think about this. You know, some of us, <laughs> here's something funny to me, right? And I see it all the time, right? If I go to somebody's house and let's say, you know, the, the remote control for the TV is missing. If the remote control for the TV is missing... Like, they searching all over for the remote control instead of going over to the TV and turning it on, right? Did you ever think about that? So many people, when they lose their remote control, they actually lose control. They're like, oh my God, where's the remote control? And they never turn on the TV. <laughs> and the TV, look, and you know, I think manufacturers are so funny because manufacturers in this day and time, manufacturers put the remote control or, or rather the controls for the TV they put it either on the back or on the bottom like you don't even see it <laughs> you know? and because you don't see it so many people they go about and they're like panicking because they can't find a remote controller versus turning the TV on turn the darn TV on right so my, my question to you today is what happens if God forbid right now tonight let's say today Today here in the Northeast is 20 something degrees. And so let's say if right now the grid went out and you had no electricity, what would you do? Think about it. What would you do? Would you just panic? Would you just wait until the grid come back on? Or are you prepared to take care of your family? Are you prepared? to take care of yourself if you live alone? Are you prepared to eat food still? You need to have something, something that 
doesn't require fire to eat. You need to have something that you can make for dinner. Now, you know, yeah, if you're here in the Northeast and it's 29 degrees and the power went down and let's say, you know, it was down for some amount of time, yeah, you could take a cooler and put your food in the cooler and put it outside and guess what, boom, there's your refrigerator. But my point is, are you prepared? Because some liberties that we have now, we may not have forever. Some liberties that we enjoy now, we may not be able to enjoy forever. Some freedoms that you have now, you may not have forever. Hey Dell, um, you know, when you look at your job, you might have a job and you may be complaining that your job is not paying you enough money. But what if you lost that job? Then what would you do? So now, you know, my mother and, and Christina, you know this as well. Grandma used to tell you and my mother used to tell us, for, for every dollar you make, put a dime away. Put something away. Because you never know what might happen in your life. What, what challenges might befall you for that week or for that month. You may have to go through. So what would you do? It's about being prepared. And when you are prepared, then guess what? You don't have to fear. Right? Because when you're prepared, guess what? I'm prepared. So if it's a challenge, okay, it's a challenge, but I don't have to fear. It's a challenge, but I don't have to worry. Yeah, you know, I can work through this. I can work through the challenges. You know, now some people go through the extreme, you know. Good afternoon, Vicky. Some people go through the extreme. Some people call, they call themselves doomsday preppers or preppers. And they stockpile stuff away. You know, I'm not talking about that. Because what does it profit you to gain the whole world and to lose your soul? What does it profit you in the midst of everything to now be fearful? I'm not saying being fearful. I'm talking about being prepared being prepared in the event that things are not as you would always want them to be, that you'll be all right. And we know that God watches over us. We know that God watches over us. But still, but still, that's right, Brenda, that's right, that's right. But still, God watches over us, but still, he doesn't want us to be foolish. He doesn't want us to live our lives. Tomorrow doesn't matter. No, it does matter. And sometimes there might be something that goes on. You know, I remember when I was a kid, um, you know, if, if my parents, and Christina, you may not know this about your grandmother and grandfather, but when, um, when I was a child, if there was a thunderstorm, my mother would tell us, turn up the TV, turn up the lights, God is speaking and she would light candles. She would turn off all the electricity and say, God is speaking. And I don't know if they were doing that because of fear or they was doing that because they were worried about lightning strikes or whatever case would be. But in their hearts and minds, it was their under the hand of God. And, and if God was moving, be still. And she would tell us, y'all be quiet and y'all be still. But my point is, in saying that and in bringing that up, my point is, is that my mother had candles. And if it started thundering and lightning, she right away turned off the TV and lit the candles and had everything that we need. So that we did not have to depend on modernizations or technology. We did not have to depend on that because of the fact of that they were prepared, right? And so we need to be prepared. That's what I'm, that's all I'm saying. Are you prepared? Now, the greatest, <laughs> the greatest preparation is, is your soul prepared for eternity? That's the greatest preparation. Right? Because you can you can prepare for disasters on this earth. But the question is, 
are you prepared for eternity? Because sooner or later, no matter how prepared we are, we will pass. Sooner or later, we will leave this earth. And when we leave this earth, we will stand before a holy God. And he will ask us, he will ask us and compare us to his son to see if we're prepared. So that's the ultimate prepare. Yeah, Evangelist Green, we had the oil lamp too. We had the oil lamp and, and my God, I can't tell you how many wicks I've trimmed. I can't tell you how many flumes I had to clean. You know, my mother would tell us to take that flume off, which was the glass part of the, the lamp and take it and you had to wash it and clean all the soot that had gathered in it from the last time you used it. You had to trim the wick and, and turn the handle so that it, the wick would be fresh again. Um, if you ran out of wick, you had to replace the wick and soak it back in the oil and fill the container back with oil. I mean, all that stuff. Had to prepare, you know? I mean, in my own life, you know, I've learned how to, to make fire. <laughs> you know, I learned various ways how to make fire. I learned ways how to cook um, how to keep food, how to prepare food, um, you know, everything, you know, I've learned a lot of things, some things that some people would consider the extreme, you know, I've learned how to do several things, but I've done it because one, I like doing it, two, I like to be prepared for every situation, you know, because I recognize that as a, as a parent, as a father, as a pastor, um, that there are people who depend on me. And so I need to be versatile in what I understand. I need to be versatile in what I can do. There's a lot of people who depend on me and so I, I try to look out for them as well as myself. So. I just wanted to lay that before you guys today. Hey, hey, brother James, how you doing? Um, are you prepared? Are you prepared? Are you preparing yourself, number one, for eternity? Number two, are you preparing yourself for the challenges of life? Because everything that you see today may not always be. All the comforts that you have today may not always be. All the friends and the people you have around you may not always be. So what will you do? You know, some people have like one friend, like I had Mother Jilks in my life who was like a counselor to me and, and um, you know, someone who I trusted and someone who I um, would pour my heart out and share my deepest whatevers with her. But I, I'm grateful for the type of woman that she was because she always pushed me to be connected to God. And so I had a connection with God that when she passed away, guess what? My life wasn't empty. My life was empty because she taught me, be prepared. Because sooner or later, son, I gotta leave. So you can't lay on my coattails all your life. You can't, you can't come to me for counsel all your life. She said, and in fact, you may die before I do. She said, so you gotta, you gotta have that source that's greater. Jesus says, you cannot be my disciples unless you love him more than you love anyone else or anything else. Because where your heart is, there your treasure will also be. Where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. So it's important to know that um, you, you have to have the source of God in your heart so that when you're standing alone and maybe everybody who say they love you has now backed away from you, guess what? You gotta have the strength to keep going. You gotta have the power to keep it moving forward. You gotta keep going forward, why? Because because it's important for you to be prepared. It's important for you to have a source that is greater than any source on earth, and that source is the Holy Spirit. And so I just wanted to encourage you for a few moments today. I thank God for you watching. Hey, Gary, God bless you, man. Please give my love to your family. Amen. So listen, I just wanted to encourage you guys for a quick second. I love you all with the love of Jesus. Have a blessed and marvelous safe day. Here in the Northeast, please be warm. Please be warm. Take care of yourself. Cover yourself. Put on layers. Do the things you need to do. Don't be fooled by the sun. The sun is sort of like Indian summer where the sun is kind of warm. 
But if you stay out there long enough, you'll get a light sweat and that sweat will open you up to the flu or to other um, uh, um, uh, diseases and things in this, in this world. And so be safe. I love you all with the love of Christ. Have a blessed and marvelous afternoon until we connect again. Take care now. Bless you.